total reach of 274 million, which helps brands reach a large audience and maximize returns on their ad spend. Where digitalization strategy, followed by the organization, leverages our RGS and the strong social media presence has resulted in a more effective and meaningful engagement with our audiences, aiding broadcasters in generating higher revenue. Talking about market share and client counts, Radio City has continued to maintain a sizable 19% market share in the Q3 of FY23, up from the 18% in the Q2 of FY23. We service 40% of the total clients advertising on radio. Further, radio also backed 38% of the 955 uh, uh, new clients who advertised for the first time on radio in Q3 of FY23. Coming to the sectoral ad spend, we observe growth in some of the major sectors signaling strength of these sectors and indicating the prospects we can expect going forward. Real estate, which contributes 70% to the industry, grew by 24% year on year. While auto, which contributes 9%, grew by 12% on a year on year. A staggering growth was observed in, the, in pharma as well, with this sector growing by 33% and contributing 9% of the volume of the industry. Food and soft drinks, is one high contributing sector and contributes 8% of the volume that is witnessed the ad regrowth of 13%. The negative trends absorbed in the government sector continued this quarter as well, with this sector degrowing by 19% and contributing to 6% of the industry. The most unexpected result was in the finance sector, which contributed 7% and regrew by 18%. Approximately, so with 15.6 stores, that is 31% of our revenue, came from created business opportunities. In line with our internal forecast that we have shared over the past few calls, we continue to believe that these revenues will continue to increase. Coming to the financial performance of the quarter gone by, we registered a Q on Q growth of 64% in EBITDA of rupees 14.5 crores in Q3 of FY23 against rupees 8.9 crores uh, earlier. The top line growth is 12% Q on Q, Q, on Q and increasing our top line from 48.6 crores to 54.7 crores. The financial performance for the nine months is, a strong, is on a much stronger footing, with the top line growing by 20% from rupees 122.4 crores in the nine month period last year to 147.5 crores in the nine month period this year. From an EBITDA of rupees 21.7 crores in the nine month period last year, we have managed a 32.2 crores EBITDA level in the nine month period FI ending FI23, indicating a 48% rise. Lastly, in terms of PAS, we moved from a loss of rupees 3.6 crores in the nine month figure last year to a profit of 4.2 crores in the nine month figure this year. The size of our present reserves attest to the fact that the company has a as always, place a high premium on maintaining a sound balance sheet. As an evidence of a strong liquidity position, on December 1st, 2022, our cash reserves climbed to rupees 288 crores from rupees 264 crores in the end of March 20, uh, 31st, 2022. These reserves offer the leeway needed to take advantage of the current and potential future opportunities. However, with the issue of this preference share, there is a component of debt in our book with additional finance costs pertaining to the sale. Lastly, with regards to the bonus issue of the non-convertible, non-cumulative renewable preference shares, the scheme was approved by the Honorable NCLT on the 23rd of December 2022. The company has fixed the record date at 13th of Jan 2023 to determine the eligible non-promoter equity shareholders to receive bonus NCRPS. The bonus committee has allotted the NCRPS to the eligible shareholders on 19 January 2023. As for the terms of the scheme, the shares will be listed at both the stock exchanges and will be readily tradable. Further, the NCRPS shall be redeemed at the price of 120 per NCRPS after the period of 36 months from the date of allotment. With this, I will request the moderator to open the floor for Q&A. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin with the question and answer session. Anyone wishing to ask a question, may please press star in one on your touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. 
Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment to call the question queue assembled. The first question is from the line of Bajrang Bafna from Sunni V Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, uh, congrats for uh, finally, you know, the uh, preference issue has got approved and uh, hopefully the minority shareholders will get the advantage. So, sir, coming back broadly on the, uh, you know, the trajectory that we were seeing pre-COVID, you know, where uh, the company has been continuously growing both in terms of top line and bottom line, you know, and post-COVID, uh, you know, we are still yet to go back to the earlier uh, profitability trajectory yes uh, this quarter has been uh, you know little better as compared to last two three quarters but going into future what sort of utilization that you are looking at and when we can you know uh, perhaps go back to the trajectory of 40 50 crore kind of net profit that we were uh, you know uh, looking before covid so if you could guide on that sense i think uh, you know we are quite uh, uh, you know, seeing the delayed uh, profitability coming to our way, though the top line is moving up, but because of the cost which has also moved up, we are yet to see, you know, the real impact of, uh, you know, operating leverage playing out for us. So if you could guide us, uh, you know, in terms of next year will be really helpful. Thank yeah, you. So uh, as, the, uh, as you, we always been maintaining that us being a fixed cost business uh, led uh, overall numbers, so obviously the last two, two and a half years for reasons we all know, has been a tough period uh, for media per se, including radio. So that's the first point I would like to make. So uh, keeping in mind here on going from the results that we have seen in the third quarter, and hopefully that we manage a decent fourth quarter, we believe uh, it's going to be an up upside for us for the next one year because currently from the way the businesses are poised, we believe we should be able to show uh, a continuous quarter-on-quarter -quarter growth both in terms of top line and bottom line. Uh, with, with the fixed cost being taken care of. Yes, our uh, investments on new businesses and uh, uh, inflationary uh, related cost escalations will be that. Uh, if, if you ask me, uh, when are we going to uh, reach the uh, pre-COVID level uh, uh, you know, profitability and uh, bottom line figures, I think uh, at this point in time it will be too early for me to commit anything. All I can commit is the uh, uh, quarter on quarter growth, which will uh, hopefully uh, in a near uh, period of time reach to the erstwhile numbers that we are seeing. Two, two of course, uh, you know, we as an organization have very clearly directed ourselves also for things that the world is looking at, which is beyond radio. That is where the you know, current investments are happening, whether it is digital outlook and the investment that we are doing. And we believe once that starts uh, giving results, much more than what it is giving to us right now, we should be uh, hopefully uh, closer to the numbers that you have in mind, which we saw at the peak of our operations two, three years back. Okay, uh, got it. And sir, in terms of utilization, where are we right now? Uh, you know, vis-a-vis pre-COVID, I think you have spoken, but I just missed that number. No problem. We are actually at the utilization level, we are at, 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 for the Q3, we are actually at more than the utilization level in pre-COVID. Pre-COVID, the utilization level was 61%, we are at 17% right now. So, this brings to the same story which I have been saying in the past two, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, meetings is that uh, the, the the challenge now is moving the yield for the uh, for the business. Uh, once the utilization level hits its peak, uh, moving yields becomes easier because that's how the correlation between increase in uh, effective rate versus utilization of inventory. So yes, to answer your question, our uh, volumes are much more than what it was pre-COVID. But it is the value which is determined by the yield is which is what uh, you know we are working towards. Okay, and what sort of field that we have achieved if we try to compare with pre-COVID numbers? We are at about 72% of the pre-COVID numbers. Okay, yet a uh, long yes. way to go. Okay, yes. got it, got it. And just the last question on the digital uh, front. Uh, we are already at, let's say, 4 crore kind of run rate on a quarterly basis. So we are moving towards, let's say, 15 to 20 crore kind of yearly run rate. Where do you see that? Because you always highlighted that this is a segment which is going to grow far 
faster as compared to the traditional channels. So uh, if you could just highlight what sort of steps that we are taking and when we can see, you know, some sort of uh, uh, profitability also flowing for us, uh, you know, from uh, this segment of the business. So the profitability is even now flowing in, but uh, uh, to the extent that we would want to see with which, which, which is what we are aiming towards. So to answer your question right now, uh, I personally believe, uh, you know, uh, our percentage, if you know last year we were about 4.5% of contribution of digital, that moved to 8, 8.5%. Next year it will be anywhere between 12, 14%. So this percentage will continuously grow and that growth is coming on the bank of a 50, 60, 70% growth over the earlier number. Of course the base is small as against the 12, 14% regular uh, radio business growth. Point. So once the base increases, the percentage growth that we are talking about any between 50 to 60 is how the whole number stacks are going to play out uh, in the next two to three years. Got it. Thank you very much, sir, and all the very best for uh, future good performance. Thank you so much. Thank you. A reminder to the participants, anyone wishing to ask a question, KP press star in one. The next question is in the line of Aparva Mehta from AM Investments. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Just uh, wanted to you know, know that how is the ground reality when you go to, say, pitch for you know, new advertisement and everything, and how is the pricing no, front? Mr. Mehta, so we are not able to hear you clearly. Can you use my hand? Uh, can you hear me now? Hello? Yes, yes, we can hear you now. Yeah. So just wanted to know the, you know, to check with you, how is the ground reality when you go to pitch for, you know, new advertisers or things like that, you know, coming and how are the pricing fund, you know, we were, we were, you know, trying to uh, go for quality than quantity and still we are, our utilization is now 70%. So are we back to the levels that we would go for quantity and not the quality that we were guided you know, to a, a quarterback that we will not uh, uh, <clears throat> go down on prices and we will, we will fight for it. So, yeah, I'll answer this question in two, for, two ways. First, uh, you know, I'll be continue to stand by a position that it is always quality over quantity because in the end uh, result, your inventory at some point in time will be limited. The rates yeah. are not limited because it's, it's where you want to take, you can take it. That's the first point yeah. I make. The second point of uh, inventory utilization is the larger challenge at the overall level. So mm. when I'm saying 70%, I'm talking about the industry utilization level itself is at that level. So unless and until there's a saturation of volumes for all players, any change in uh, uh, your rates will not be easy because the moment you try to push in for a higher rate, there are options which become far more attractive as far as an advertiser is concerned. Answering your first question about the, the sentiments of advertisers, I have already in the, in the earlier note said that almost 38% of our clients in this quarter have come in new. So that means there are a lot of newer players or newer uh, entrants into the radio investment uh, uh, you know, market for which is coming and in investing in radio, which is, uh, which is an LG sign where people believe that radio still works. In fact, just last week, uh, an independent survey kind of put up a record saying that 8 out of 10 people believe, uh, especially in the tier 3, tier 3 cities, that radio works for them and most of the time is spent on radio. So that itself is a justification also of the fact that uh, if you divide India into the metro, the tier 1, tier 2, 3 cities, there is a lot of radio plays still existing. And we are gung up on the fact that newer advertisers are coming in and hence we believe that, you know, the optimal utilization level should reach in the next, uh, you know, uh, four to five quarters. And then the event ER play, which is the effective rate play, will be easier when you are at a saturated level of uh, utilizations. But the trend of, you know, higher prices, we are seeing any trend like we were at maybe two quarters, we were at 60% uh, of our peak rate, now we are at 65, now we are 70. Is that trend changing? Are we seeing some uh, changes in the trend or no? So, yeah, on the rate front, uh, from our perspective, there is a uh, you know marginal increasing trend that we are seeing. That is because that is directed and we believe that's the way forward. On the inventory front, I have already told you that there is an increased front 
from a Q1 to Q2 to Q3, the utilization level is increasing. And we believe if everything settles down, our utilization level will increase and that will allow us, and I would want to believe competition, to kind of somehow push for raise because without that, you know, revenues will be at a struggle for most players. Because after inventory, it is just the rates that they, which will play around when it comes to final revenues. And, and on the PMA, there will be you know lot of uh, government spending will come because of election and everything. There is state election, there is central election coming. So, what is your uh, assessment? Of how much of that will come to ADM? You know, the ad spending which the election will be there. Uh, any any ballpark figure that you have? Any such that next year there will be or some big ad spending come. See, unfortunately, what has happened is it all depends between now and the time when the election comes. How bullish is, is the current, present government? Because unless and until the present government is not uh, pushed uh, uh, from, a, from a perspective of uh, losing uh, uh, their, revenue, their, their uh, elections, there will be that much uh, prudency from their end because even in the state election when that they were confident, the investments have really not been as high as it was normally in the erstwhile period. So if competition is not there, uh, we don't see, uh, you know, huge investments happening. But having said that, without a doubt, government spending vis-a-vis -vis what it was this year will be higher next year for sure. Now the percentage of growth <coughs> over this year will completely depend on the mood of the, of the nation, if I may say so, and the confidence of the present government because, <coughs> you know, if the present government doesn't invest much because the others hardly have any money to invest, to be fair and honest, mm -hmm. because, you know, uh, uh, it has to be led by the uh, government because that's where they want to. But <laughs> typically what happens in an election is that, you know, they use that uh, last four, five, six months to kind of tom tom all the achievements of the things they have done in their tenure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. what we, we have confidence will come, back, come to us in form of radio investments also, as in other mediums. On the previous year, have you any data that, Last election, how much when the center was there? How much was we we got any any ad spending and any data part which we have and we can honestly speaking, uh, any data of the past will have no reference because that past okay. was you know very competitive arena that at least the top three political parties had to aggressively invest, mm -hmm. expecting uh, a, 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 you know a, a favor uh, for them in terms of uh, the elections. Uh, that has changed, you know, and you know, I'm a, we can argue on that, but that has changed. So hence, our data may not have relevance, but if you see and ask me and you want me to kind of put my neck out and say, I believe uh, if all goes well, then say 8 to 10 crores of additional play that will be there. That can come from the current base as we go forward for the next year. Okay, okay, okay. And on the fixed cost front, you know, license will be roughly around 20 crores. Employee cost will be around uh, roughly around 60 crores for next year, and uh, other expense will be roughly around 100 crores. That that can we take all this uh, bulk of thing? Yeah, yeah. So you are saying the combined uh, cost of anywhere around the 195 to 200 crores. Is that what you are saying for the next year? Yeah, 180 to 190 crores. 180 is what 180 is what possibly will end up this year, a little okay. year and there. Okay. <clears throat> nominal uh, in inflation cost and a little bit of marginal, uh, you know, employee related cost and the additional investment will be the additional that we are talking about. But like, you know, as, as always, we will be prudent about our top line versus bottom line and our investments and cost increments will be asked for that. And we can, we can be rest assured that we'll keep a close eye of not exceeding current cost by the basic requirement that will be there from a year on year perspective. Okay. And the additional cost we are, which we are talking about, can you, you know, ballpark tell us what kind of, where, which area we would like to spend and, you know, which will help our future growth to go and, you know, is, are, are we spending on that kind of area where we want the future to grow substantially on the digital yeah, side? All, all, the, all yeah. cost investments to answer your question is only on the future growth business that, when I'm saying that, I'm talking about digital. Whether it okay. is increasing the digital ecosystem in, in this whole solution providing business that we do for brands and clients is where we are investing. Okay. Any major investment uh, which will look at leapfrogging ourselves will possibly come out of CapEx uh, 
if, 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 if that's the way we are looking at it, or acquisitions as opportunities come out to us. And uh, it will be in, in, the, in, the, in the digital part of our business per se. And uh, in the traditional business will be only you know, doing and doing efficiency management is what I believe. Okay. okay. Thanks a lot and wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. A reminder to the participants, anyone wishing to ask a question, hey, please press star in one. The next question is on the line of Mohit Khanna from Banyan Capital Advisors, LLP. Please go ahead. Hello, sir. Good evening. Uh, sir, I just wanted to... Uh, Mr. Khanna, sir, your voice is sounding very muffled. Hello. Is it fine now? Uh, yeah, you'll have to be a little louder. We can hear you now. The last statement, we could hear you. Okay, okay. So I just wanted to understand a little bit better on the advertising front, uh, right? Uh, and, and within different sectors. So what sectors are you seeing advertising should now pick up? Because as you uh, highlighted, finance uh, unfortunately didn't uh, actually degrew in this quarter. Yeah, so for us, uh, auto will definitely increase now because uh, more or less things are getting falling in place. So we believe auto real estate is definitely uh, increasing. Uh, for the, the projects that is uh, in and and uh, uh, other sectors that we are looking at the top five will be your uh, pharma and healthcare which I have said is also increasing and uh, in the coming year I, I also believe government should increase uh, given the uh, reasons that we mentioned about the state government and going into the final uh, uh, you know looks about elections so the normal four or five top categories will increase uh, as we go forward. Right. And, and if I compare your numbers year over year, um, this and if I remove the other income piece because that's the interest income that you earn, the operating side has not delivered as much in, in the festive quarter of third quarter as it was. What what are the probable reasons? Uh, where where did it go wrong with the market uh, that the advertising didn't come through? So uh, clearly, I don't know, uh, you know, if you've been observing media closely, uh, November has been an uh, aberration month across media industries, and we're all trying to figure out what happened, you know, a good Diwali, and then uh, normally they didn't learn after Diwali, but this was a complete, uh, you know, watershed, a watershed movement for the media industry with absolutely no recovery post the first 10, 18 days after Diwali. So that is the only place where, you know, uh, we believe, uh, for this, like, like in our case, we had a great quarter last year, you know, unlike uh, yes. some of our competitors. And we had actually re increased our percentage share in the business from a revenue perspective. That really didn't play out because uh, if you see, we are at, a, uh, you know, about uh, roughly around uh, 7, uh, uh, 10, 9% uh, down over the last quarter, primarily driven from the fact that November we were, uh, we were completely down. So, yeah, to answer, to answer your question, that is the only place where possibly things are not played down and that has been an aberration month if you look for the quarter for us. Otherwise, for a quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis and, uh, you know, uh, our bottom line uh, to top line numbers have more or less been, uh, been efficient enough, I would believe. All right. right. And, and, and one more thing. When you talk of utilization levels at 71%, can you give us a breakup of what exactly the numbers for tier one cities and tier two and tier three cities? So, uh, yeah, no, it, it's, a, it's a nice question that you've asked. The challenge is that the, uh, the top metros are actually lower than the 71, uh, is at, at, a, at the 70% uh, utilization level, and that is where the revenue is getting hit. Because typically what happens is, and, and the quarter three, where you have the peak uh, quarter happening for media and for radio also, you end up at anywhere around 85 to 90 percent of utilization level, and the average of of all uh, markets put together. Because if you see the top markets traditionally are are uh, are the ones like the top eight metros uh, that we talk about. They are anywhere in the Q3 of uh, any uh, normal year will be around 90 95 percent utilization level. The next set of market, your even market uh, low P2 market, will be around. 70-75% and the rest of the markets are anywhere between 55 to 60%. Now what has happened is that 90%, 95% that you are getting in the top market is stagnated itself at 70%.
Mm-hmm. And that is the reason why the overall increase has not happened in the utilization level uh, as against the erstwhile numbers that we are talking about. Right. Right. So, so just like for us, uh, are we are we still going to stick to the strategy of pulling in more volumes, or now do you think uh, when when the utilization levels have sort of stuck um, at seventy percent level, so do you think it's a it's a better strategy from here on to go for price increase and so or I, I, or maybe from quarter one of this year. I have always stuck to my first priority as price increase, even when the market was not saturated, because uh, that's where I believe it's, 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 it's a better play when it comes to media, especially when you're talk, talk, talking about businesses which have invent, finite inventory, unlike in print where you can have a DVC plus cost and increased pagination. So I've always believed that it has to be a price-based, quality-based uh, uh, strategy which has continued in all the three quarters. The only difference being that in the first two quarters, if you have observed, I was at an 18% volume share. In the third quarter, when we, when we saw that the first one, 90, 95% of inventory utilization is not being seen, we said, let us do a gut, you know, a change and take a little bit more than what you would conventionally do, which means a little hit on your uh, ER from what it was and ensure that that additional 1% will offshoot the little bit of erosion of ER. But our strategy will still continue to be riding on quality based ER led strategy because that's where the future of the business is. Fair enough. Thank you so much. I'll come back with you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Namesh Maheshwari from RSPN Ventures. Please go ahead. Hello. Can you hear me? Yeah, you can. Little louder, we can hear you. Yeah, yeah. So I just want to understand what is the rationale behind distribution of uh, these uh, 90CR via preferential uh, using Section 230 rather than, uh, you know, simply giving the bonus to the shareholders. Okay. So uh, the year the bonus was not supposed to be, uh, we basically, yeah, so, so this is basically, see, under section 230 to 232, typically we share to the shareholders and through the NCLT approval, we have selected this section 230 to clear the things. So that's the main reason. So the NCLT approval uh, route has been taken. No, no, I just want to understand why, uh, you know, why you are not using the bonus issue directly, like, uh, you know, you can distribute the money directly to the shareholders rather than going through the preferential route. Because if we have uh, 200 CR of uh, mutual funds as an investment in the balance sheet, we can uh, directly sell and distribute to the shareholders. So in two, if you remember in 2019, we have issued the bonus. And this was in 2020 when we have uh, done this NCRPS. Unfortunately, due to COVID and NCLT and all the approvals got delayed by two, three years. So at that point in time, we wanted to give the value to the shareholder over a period of time. Because there was a buyback in 2018, there was a bonus in 2019, then the split has happened, and the decision was there in which we have continued. In the stagger, in the stagger manner, the uh, money can be distributed to the shareholders. At that same time, the investment required in the business can be continued. Got it. Uh, why and why there is a three-year time period for the redemption of 90 CR? Uh, you know, when company currently have more than, uh, you know, 200 CR in the balance sheet. So why it should not be in the one year time period? So, okay. When the scheme was launched, it was COVID period. And that is the reason to uh, cash had to be saved. And we gave this bonus over a key period pro- provided. We get out of the COVID period. Unfortunately, the regulatory approval took time. Otherwise, if that approval had come in line, we would be in the next year, we would be actually reading the, the NCPRS. And uh, uh, one more thing on the business per se, uh, can you little bit explain about uh, your digital offerings and how the revenue will be, you know, uh, coming into uh, coming into the PNL from the digital front? So very clearly, I've been saying that, you know, we have been increasing the digital contribution to the overall business from a 4.5 to a 8 to a 12, 14, what we are looking next year. Our offerings are very clear here. Right now, 
offering the we are playing the social media influencing place which is where marketers are currently putting almost 25% of your investments you know uh, unlike uh, radio which has for 3% of the advertising pie uh, within the digital 25% of advertising investments are happening in the social media influencer marketing space largely led by influencers our advantage here is that you know with the rjs that we have who are, who are influencers and i have already spoken about the reach that we get we are play, our play is very clear we are using a mix of our rjs as influencers in the social media space we are using our radio inventory and wherever needed where the ground uh, on ground event is required we are clubbing all of them and giving this as a holistic solution to brand and to answer your question uh, we are looking at anywhere between a uh, 12 to 14% uh, contribution coming from digital uh, as we go forward got it got it uh, uh, one more thing uh, you know in the uh, from the investment per se is there uh, how you are thinking to use the investment uh, going forward like uh, 100 cr we can see that uh, uh, we can expect for the redemption of the preferential other than this uh, uh, how we are planning to use the money uh to better our roe and uh, ratios yeah so you know like uh, you know why we are exploring uh, various opportunities in the digital space as you know the digital space in our scheme of things means two or three things one is of course the influencer marketing uh, space that i spoke spoke about the other is this whole uh, content creation uh, uh, and distribution that happens which includes creation of audio video format it also includes creation of podcast and distribution of podcast into various platforms so you know as we go forward and as we see the whole uh, evolution of the rate, uh, of the digital industry in terms of marketers needs we may at times also look at acquisitions of existing players who would want to kind of be part of a larger game plan very clearly when it comes to us we will see from a perspective of what value we add to a future game plan in terms of solution provide uh, the ad solutions uh, uh, that we are giving to our clients so that that that's the way we're looking at it, it will be investment uh from from things that we are going to create on our own and also possible uh, acquisitions of uh, platforms or businesses which is uh, complementary to the digital play that we are looking at any other any other uh, you know any uh, any plan in the pipeline right now uh, uh see our discussions are happening at two or three different levels there are two early stages you know it will be possibly you know you'll have to give me a couple of more quarters before i really uh, you know things freeze out for us and we really make the game plan for me to share anything otherwise it will be just a, a good thought from our end but to uh, to kind of give you the confidence and uh, this uh, we are exploring multiple things and unfortunately you know i am i'm in mean, no point to kind of at this point in time to kind of disclose that okay so in name we can expect this in next year sure for sure okay thank you thank you for your time thank you a reminder to the participants anyone wishing to ask a question may please press star in one the next question is from the line of hitain borucha from join the capital please go ahead hello yes uh yeah thank for the opportunity sir good evening so my first question is on the guidance side so we have been doing uh, around 50 crore kind of revenue from last two quarters so just wanted to understand by when can we like uh, do you see any visibility this revenue run rate can go up to 70 80 crores per quarter in coming let's say two three quarters or maybe four quarters in next four five quarters Too difficult to kind of give that kind of an indication, but uh, very clearly uh, you can see at the 50, 55 crore uh, level, uh, there is a it's a positive bottom line that we are talking about. So we are looking at whatever increase that will happen will go straight to the bottom. Yes, we will be happy mm-hmm. to look at the numbers you are talking about, but if we all play around with the fact how fast the levels of utilization increase, how fast we are able to kind of increase our rates, and how fast. Uh, you know the digital playout is going to happen. Uh, it's a combination of all those things that we are looking at. But I can only give you one confidence that the numbers that we are looking at, both at the top line and the bottom line levels, for the next year will be definitely far more than what we have seen in the past two or three years. So we are we like uh, very confident to do like 20% growth for at least for next two years? Without a doubt. 
ओके ओके एंड सर व्हेन यू टॉक अबाउट द ऑपरेटिंग लेवरेज दैट व्हिच इज गोइंग टू प्ले इन नेक्स्ट फोर फाइव क्वार्टर सो आर यू प्रीटी मच कॉन्फिडेंट आर मार्जिन विल गो बैक टू थर्टी थर्टी फाइव परसेंट काइंड ऑफ लेवल बिकॉज करेंटली वी हैव सॉरी या या सर प्लीज आई वुड नॉट बी एबल टू कमेंट ऑन द मार्जिन लेवल बिकॉज आई बीन कंटिन्यूसली इन इन द लास्ट टू कॉल्स ऑल्सो बीन सेइंग दैट आर डिजिटल प्ले विल मीन इन्वेस्टमेंट फ्रॉम आर साइड both at the okay. tech level and as uh, there were uh, required maybe at the at the uh, you know tech level and so on and so forth so that will take care uh, take increase our cost a little so margins will be uh, uh, not as high as 30 35% that you are looking at but as we kind of peak ourselves you will possibly see those margins coming in uh, <coughs> Uh, uh, you are continuously focusing on digital investments in the digital so can you some uh, like uh, uh, throw some more color in detail what exactly are we doing in digital what where are we focusing and what kind of investments we are looking so like i said you know we are right now exploring two or three different avenues in the digital uh, uh, platform and uh, mm. of course one is of course in the social media influencing uh, space the other of course like i said as we are exploratory going forward in the digital business and as we feel there will be more and more need for content creators or distribution that has to be happening we will kind of uh, uh, do our investments uh, in those areas as we reach those destinations and uh, hence you know all i can say is that it's a work in progress and whatever number changes you are seeing in the digital for whatever the base is is i think should be reason enough for you to believe that we are in the right track so uh, sorry but what do you mean by avenues in digital platform i didn't get that exactly there are various things if you really look at the whole digital space you know mm-hmm. we got more than uh, you know 50000 odd crores this year uh, uh, with all put together then in that there is a search based uh, revenue that is a uh, a display revenue if i have to take those three, two things out there's a lot of revenues happening in the influencer marketing space there's a lot of revenues happening in the video space which is the mm-hmm. distribution of video